Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obito Potato. This is Kerbal Space Program, and this is a brand new series that is hopefully going to be running for a very, very, very long time, in which we shall do all sorts of dodgy Kerbal experiments and explosions and rocketries and buildings and aircrafts and runways and rockets and buildings and runways and parachutes. All of that and more. Way more. Because we've got a whole bunch of mods installed uh, that should make this an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly interesting game. Um, for those of you who may be observant and may have played Kerbal Space Program before, you may note that this is not your typical, um, you know, space center. This is because we are in a completely different system. We are in a uh, modded system called uh, called Galileo's Planet Pack. That's the name of the mod. And uh, that's put us on an entirely different planet an entirely different place and it's uh, it's very very cool indeed actually in fact we can go to the tracking center and have a, uh, a a little look and see what's what's going on thank you buddy no bother anyway yes this is it this 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 is it this is the place this is gale um and the whole idea behind gale is that there is a bunch of stuff that is quite similar to our solar system, I think. I think that's that's sort of the uh, the logic behind that. But there's a bunch of planets. I'm super super excited to explore them all. Um, and yeah, I'm really really looking forward to just getting down and dirty with uh, with Kerbal Space Program. Now, a quick word of warning before we really jump in and get our teeth into this game. Um, this is not going to be like the 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 traditional classic Orbital Potato uh, series. Is. This is not going to be a series that comes out daily. This is going to be a series that comes out much less frequently uh, and is going to be, in comparison to my other videos, uh, more highly edited and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to to sort of strike up a little bit of a narrative uh, on our adventure through the through the through the system of Gale, system of Gale. I don't think it's called the system of Gale. It's the system of something, but Gale is the planet. I don't know. Anyway, yes, that's what uh, that's what we're gonna do. As I say, we got a whole bunch of mods installed. There's probably gonna be a shit ton more mods added as I go. If I need them, I'll add them. I don't really know. This is on hard, by the way, so there is no going back. There is no there is no pussy footing around here. If we launch a rocket, we be damn sure. We need to be damn sure that that rocket is actually gonna be up to scratch. You know, there there are no second chances. This is like a goddamn real space program that's how we roll around here we don't we don't hold our punches back anyway without further ado let's uh let's have a little look at the that's entirely not the right thing that i wanted to do that's in, also not entirely the right thing that i wanted to do um we should probably we could probably take a little bit of a look at the research right now uh, but I really wasn't aiming for that building. I was aiming for another building. I'm so excited. I really, really love Kerbal Space Program, but um, I've never really had, never really had the ability uh, to do it before. I mean, it doesn't really work in a daily format, but now it really, really will if uh, if I if I edit and take a little bit more time with it. Anyway, there's a bunch of um, of tech with a bunch of mods that we've got. We've got a huge, huge tech tree. We've just got the basic tech tree for the moment, but that um, that might that might change in the future. I don't know. But uh, but we'll see. Anyway, yep, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try and get some science in this in this here first episode, and fingers crossed that it goes that it goes fantastically well. The building that I am looking for is where the fuck is it? Where the hell do I get the contracts from? I don't get it from. Can I, did they just get rid of the contract building? Like, is that, is that, is that what the hell's happened? Mission control? That's the fucking one. All right, all right. We're off to a really great start, but it's okay. It's, it's I, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to be fine. Um, gather scientific uh, data from Gale. I'm actually, I actually think that that's probably um, the right course of action for us. Prestige? Trivial. There is no such thing as trivial prestige. There is, there is, there is only prestige. Launch our first vessel. We're also going to do that. Escape the atmosphere. Oh boy, that's that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, but anyway, yes, let's get down and dirty and uh, let's uh, let's design the first ever rocket.
All right, all right. I think that that is probably good enough. Um, I was humming and hawing a little bit about the battery pack, but I think for the most part that that should be more than adequate for a first run. I'm just very, very hopeful that uh, that shit doesn't go wrong. And I was also having a little bit of a decide about who who is going to have the honor, the absolute honor of uh, of rising to the occasion. And, uh, and, and, and piloting this pod. Um, also, naming convention. Naming convention is going to be very, very important, and I want to make sure that we get off on the right foot. I'm going to start off by calling this the Enterprise, right? Because I feel that that's, uh, is that, is that how you spell Enterprise? That is now how you spell Enterprise. Um, I don't know, testing, testing craft. We'll, we'll give it a little bit of a description so that we know exactly, uh, for Gale. Yeah, you know, just so that we know exactly why we built it. I also have zero idea how to spell Gale, apparently. There we go. Um, let's give that a save, and then let's, uh, let's give that a little bit of a launch, I think. I'm pretty certain that this is going to be a moderately successful run, but hey-ho, I guess we'll have to wait and see. By the way, uh, this is a camera unit. It's actually a black and white camera unit. Um, I've got a mod installed that allows us to see uh, external cameras and from their point of view. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, exactly how our the images that we get back from our from our space program as uh, as we go on. So that's going to be very, very interesting indeed. Let's take this up to the launch pad and see what uh, and see what this aircraft has to offer. I'm very, very hopeful that this is going to be. The new standard in terms of uh, in terms of transportation. This is completely unnecessary. I, I really do not need that uh, that docking node. We're not docking to anything quite yet. Uh, just to show you how the camera works, actually, we can activate the camera, and of course, we're looking at nothing right now, so that's complete an utter wank. But we'll keep that pinned up in the corner because I actually want to use that some sometime throughout the flight. Anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stalling because I'm a little bit nervous, but for the most part, I think that we're pretty much ready to go. Um, we shouldn't need any communication stuff anyway. We're going to be coming back down. We do need to make sure, however, that, uh, that our staging isn't complete wank. Uh, otherwise, we will be in for a world of pain. That would have been a very, very bad start in the very first episode. Staging always fucks you. Always fucks you. Anyway, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Let's fucking do it. That was a little bit of a mistake, but it's okay. It seems we had a little bit of a rough, little bit of a rough takeoff, but that's okay. I mean, it literally doesn't matter uh, which way we go. I didn't have SAS turned on, so of course we didn't go straight up. That's not actually a problem um, in terms of anything, but hey ho. Uh, what the hell were our contracts actually? Well, it looks like we fulfilled both of them. That is that is fantastic. Now, if I press, what is it, F3? F3 pauses just for a second. Now, there is, believe it or not, I did install. <laughs> Here we go. Let's let's just have a little, a little hunt through whilst I find the... Where the hell is the contract monitor? This is not the one. There is another one. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's okay, I'm gonna find it. That's a contract reward modifier, which I don't really particularly want to use, but where the hell is it? Oh my god. It's so embarrassing. It's like it's like just it's just you know, it's just being able not to perform at the at the time that you're that you want to perform, you know? You know what I'm saying? Gents or ladies. You know what I'm saying. Uh yeah, so this is also another uh, cool mod that uh, is actually going to tell us when... Alright, it's fucking useless. I can't find the fucking mod. Where is it? Is this the one? No, fuck it. I can't find it. But anyway, um, there was going to be something that allowed us to monitor the contracts. But, you know, like everything in life, it's fine. We can see from up here that we've already fulfilled uh, this. Let's open our parachute up. There should be no issues with that. And we should... Uh, smoothly float down to the ground. Let's observe the mystery goo. Uh, so you should be able to show available science experiments. Uh, yes, there is a bunch of science experiments that we can actually do. So you can do a crew report. There we go. Keep that data. Keep that data. 
Uh, we've done that, aeronautical experiments. So I added this and uh, to see if it was actually counting as a real science experiment. Uh, and an EVA report. I mean, I think you can get out, but I don't know if you'll you'll manage to hold on. Do we do, like do we do we want to try? Yeah, while well, you're off. Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think that that would uh, that would be allowed. Yeah, cannot disembark while uh, while off of Kerbin's surface. Astronaut complex. Okay, so we can't actually do that one for now, but that's okay. That's fine. Uh, yeah, the mystery goo observation. We're keeping that data because otherwise we're going to lose it all in the transmission and I really don't want to lose all of the data so we're going to keep it but unfortunately even if we keep it it seems that we're not getting the full value of it I have no idea why that's the case but either way things uh, things are going pretty good unfortunately I didn't manage to have a little look at the camera in uh, in my entire time in flight but that's not particularly uh, the end of the world as you can see, the camera is a tool that we are definitely going to be using uh, more and more as we progress onwards. But for a first flight, the Enterprise, even though it... Wow, okay, that was very loud for what it really was. Although I suppose these things in reality are probably quite loud. Anyway, this, this is the Enterprise. And the reason that it's called the Enterprise is because it is a mighty ship that may not look mighty but inside has got a big heart and has no fear of going to places that uh, that no ships have gone before and that is uh, that is definitely the case however I have a funny feeling that uh, that we're going to see a lot more ships plunge into the waters of Gale that that interesting little flight of the Enterprise fantastically managed to get us 18 signs which is absolutely beautiful um, and that is a treasure trove of scientific information that I'm sure uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of these Kerbals will love to analyze in the science lab which I will probably find just as difficult to find no I know where the research and admin building is or the research and development building is I'll probably find that just as difficult to find as I did mission control but whatever it doesn't particularly matter anyway uh, that's good stuff uh, we should probably yeah we'll get we'll get all of this stuff back none of it's ruined apart from I mean the, the only thing that's irreplaceable is the is the solid fuel really and the parachute was recovered as well so you know fantastic overall um recovered a bunch of parts I didn't even take note of how much the the, the thing cost in the first place it doesn't particularly matter and you gain one XP fantastic my friend we've got frontier mission summary which is uh which is grand and uh, we've got a little a little update. A little update on uh, on you, because uh, as 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 Kerbals as the as the Kerbal in command, I, well, no, the human in command, the human in command of the Kerbals. I like to see exactly uh, exactly what they're doing. Anyway, yeah, you are cool. I like what you're saying, buddy. But um, before we take up any contracts, we should probably take the opportunity to have a little look at our research and development. And it looks like we're going to be able to get quite a lot of bang for our buck when it comes for uh, when it comes to science, because we're going to be able to get the first two technologies, both of which cost five science points to research. And we are going to get a absolute number of resources from a whole plethora of mod packs. Most interestingly, I think, airships. Airships is another mod that I've got installed. I have no idea how it works. I'm literally just going with the flow. Um, in this case, I suppose the flow of hydrogen and or helium, preferably helium if at all possible for airships because it's less flammable. Um, but I am super, 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 super excited to see all of the, the crazy shit that we can get up to uh, with these two bad boys. Um, so we could, no, I was waiting to say we could try to go for something else, but it looks like, uh, nope, we'll just be sticking with our two base technologies. Um because that's all we can really afford right now. Would you expect anything different from a, a scrub like me? I suppose we could have gone to Engineering 101 and then we could have gone to Survivability. survivability. But let's let's be quite frank here. Uh, survivability has never been a strong suit of the, of the Kerbals, so I'm not going to start caring right now, am I? Anyway, um, another mission to uh, survey Gale's surfaces, I think, uh, may indeed be in the works. So I think we are going to try and do that for our next ship. Uh, the Enterprise, the Enterprise name is a strong one, and I'm thinking that that may well be exactly what is required for, uh, for the second vessel that takes to the skies of Gale. But, hmm, I guess, I guess, I guess we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, 
after trying to build an airship and failing miserably and realizing that I needed to actually buy the parts, um, I kind of came back in here and wanted to express how much of an idiot I actually am, but, I mean, it doesn't particularly matter. Everyone knows I'm an idiot already. Uh, the problem is, is that I, I, I don't know if we're quite ready to commit to a purchase of 25,000 whatever the hell Kerbins measure their money in. Doesn't particularly matter, I suppose, but we are definitely ready to commit to a purchase of 5,000. Like, 5,000, that's easy. That's easy, that's peasy, that's lemon squeezy. So, uh, it doesn't look like airships are going to be coming along quite yet, but, I mean, we could purchase them individually, but I kind of want to purchase the whole thing. Yeah, I kind of want to purchase the whole thing altogether. Yeah, so we'll hold off and, uh, and we'll do airships, but for now, let's get an Enterprise 2 up in the sky. El Pronto style. So, with construction done of the Enterprise Mark II, all that remains is for us to fly it. This is a little bit of post-commentary, um, and this is quite simply a little bit of a disappointment, actually, because this never actually flew, or at least this variant of the Enterprise Mark II never flew. Um, all it did was sit on the ground and collect science, and I just clicked a lot of buttons, and it was <laughs> it was pretty interesting, I guess. I mean, if you like clicking buttons, then this would have been, you know, a whale of a time for you. But I didn't think that you guys would like to, to, to sit through this and watch me click a bunch of buttons um, and manage to not click buttons. That's about it. That's all that happens. And then we recovered the vehicle, and... Uh, and <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. That's what happened to the Enterprise Mark II. Wow, fuck me, we actually earned 17 science from doing literally fuck all. Um, and we got our entire value of our uh, of our craft back, which is lovely. You didn't you didn't earn any ribbons though, Mr. Jebediah, and uh, about that I'm sure you're very very disappointed. Uh, let's let's go to the launch pad and just straight up launch the Enterprise Mark II again because Quite frankly, I think it's uh, it's 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 a real what the fuck? I didn't want to come in here. Uh, it's it's a it's a real shame that uh, that we didn't manage to actually launch this craft that we created. I mean, what's the point in creating a craft if you're just gonna plonk it on the runway and just let it chill out? That's fucking that's terrible. That's terrible. That's a terrible waste of potential. A terrible waste of uh, everything actually. Uh, crew report while well landed at Gale, uh, Gale's pod on the shores. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that we can do that we're quite near um, But it's all it's all shores. I guess like shores is another biome sort of over that way I'm kind of interested in trying to head over there, but uh, for now we're going to launch We're going to have a little look at our camera. We're gonna activate it and uh, We're gonna hit the launch button. So fingers crossed ladies and gents you enjoy this launch from the from the perspective of the black and white camera. And that is exactly why you do your staging in the vehicle assembly building, not like an idiot on the launch pad. It doesn't particularly matter though, given the grand scheme of things, but it is rather annoying. Okay, can we can we do a bunch of can we do a bunch of scientific data here? I'm pretty sure that we've already done mystery goo above the above the skies of Gale, but it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, temperature display we definitely haven't done before. Record metrological data, perfect. All right, we're getting through all of this science today, chaps. We're gonna tick all the boxes. You know what satisfies me more than ticking all the boxes? Well, quite a lot of stuff, actually. A lot of stuff. Uh, EVA report while flying over. EVA report is not possible right now for <laughs> because I'm too much of an idiot and uh, haven't upgraded my whatever you call it. But that, in all honesty, is a great success for what could have been an absolutely catastrophic mission. But uh, but it just turns out that it that it wasn't. Okay, so 
Again, I'll take that. We're only paying for the solid fuel here, which is very, very nice indeed. And it means that we really haven't had to uh, haven't had to, to stray away from this fantastic enterprise model, which is literally just a workhorse at, uh, at this rate. A workhorse for the, uh, the, fantastic, the fantastic folks of Gale. Fantastic Kerbal Scientists of Gale, which is really, really nice. But it looks like we're probably going to have to step up our game and, uh, and actually try and go after some money this time because we can't just keep on sending uh, science crafts up into the air uh, just because we feel like it. However, in saying that, that is a damned good amount of science and uh, by golly geez, I'll be happy with that. We recover pretty much our entire value uh, of the craft. Obviously, nothing was destroyed, which is lovely. And, uh, and nothing of craziness to report. So let's take a quick little look at our, uh, at our uh, contracts. Uh, hull into flight above Gale. How high do I need to be? Altitude 300... Th that's, that's quite a lot of money, actually. That's quite a lot of money. Now, there, if we did actually uh, get our window out... We could search by sort by difficulty, sort by reward, by funds. So you actually give me the most funds total, right? That's that makes no sense. I'm sorting by funds, dude. Sort by funds out of the offered ones. Apparently, you're just not keen on doing that. Okay, so I'll take you. That's cool. Uh, a stack decoupler landed at Gale. That's really easy to do, and I will totally take that. Um, and that's all we can really take right now. So let's, 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 let's try our very best to create a craft. Maybe, perhaps not in the, uh, in the Enterprise name. Maybe, maybe, maybe perhaps not in the Enterprise name, because I'm not... So, to keep a short story even shorter, what we end up doing is a bunch of modifications to the Enterprise Mark II. As you can indeed see, we replace the uh, little, tiny, insignificant motor with a motor that actually packs some punch that burns for more than, I don't know, 10 seconds. I think it burns for like 20, 20. Well, you can see down there in the, in the thingy. Um... But yeah, no, we replace this for the contract purposes and uh, we take this out onto the runway and that's all lovely and then I completely forget that uh, that I actually need to attach a stack decoupler to this. So then I have to end up rolling it back into the vehicle assembly bay just to attach a stack uh, a stack decoupler onto the bottom of it after I spend about two minutes clicking around here. I mean, that's why we're going in uh, in fast time speed here because I'm a fucking idiot. Anyway, um, there's a couple of little issues that I end up having that I'm just going to talk about now because in hindsight, they're actually really, really easy and I'm an idiot, as you very well know. So the stack decoupler and the rocket that we're currently testing, I think it's, I think it's called the hammer. I think it's called the hammer. Um, both of them need to be need to be on Gale on the launch pad to be tested. Sounds fine, right? When I end up attaching the stack decoupler to the very bottom of the rocket, as I am momentarily about to do, as you can see, only the stack decoupler is actually touching the launch pad. Therefore, only the stack decoupler uh, contract can be completed when it's activated on the launch pad. Okay, so that's the first problem. The first problem is that we can't complete the rocket one because the stack decoupler is actually on top of or underneath the rocket, preventing the rocket from actually touching uh, the ground. As you can see uh, in the contract menu, uh, the little ground side is not highlighted. The other mistake that I just made there was activating the stack decoupler by right clicking on it, which is apparently the stupidest thing to do because you actually need to very, very specifically activate it through the staging menu. I think this is a perfect, perfect metaphor. This this flight is a perfect metaphor for my entire experience with these two contracts that I've had. Um, just a, a little technicality that I really didn't read, um, and we do, <laughs> yeah, we crash, we crash the big rocket booster. It doesn't particularly matter, but it's a little bit of money down the drain, I suppose. It was more of an experience uh, flight than anything else, you know. I mean, we got, we got, a, we learned a lot, right? We learned a lot from this. Um, a little bit of science, recover the parts, whatever, all good. But basically. Um, I do want to impress that uh, that it was a specific technicality uh, that that caused that issue to uh, to occur, and I will end up resolving that at the start of the second episode. Uh, I do actually, I have actually managed to complete the test for the rocket. I've managed to complete the contract. I'll have you know, 
but uh, but it's just it's just a little iffy, a little iffy thing. But you know, this is all in the pursuit of cash because we do actually want to uh, to achieve our goals. As you can see, the contract does indeed go green. We uh, properly activate the stack decoupler, which is really really nice. Uh, we got a lovely little flash through our black and white camera there. I really 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 want to take advantage of these uh, these really really interesting shots that we're going to get from the from the camera mod that I've got installed. Also, uh, tangentially related, we managed to to get blown a little bit off course. So, you know, we, we use this opportunity to get more science. And I think that that's really what it's all about, right? This whole this whole experience is literally just about the science. Um, and the fact that we can earn a little bit of side cash by, uh, by testing some arbitrary bits of tech that we're going to end up using anyway, that is fantastic. That is really, really good. But, uh, you know, can't really complain about that in the slightest. Our parachute is kind of not good enough for this job uh, we probably do need to improve upon that for maybe the mark four or perhaps we're going to go with an entirely new naming convention altogether um, but I don't know any other Star Trek uh, model ships, so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research behind the the scenes uh, I only know the enterprise I'm afraid anyway back to uh, back to back back to the back to me back to me in 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 real time that's just a little technicality that we can iron out before the next episode. Anyway, in the next episode, I foresee us going where no Kerbal has gone before. Literally anywhere. I don't really know where we're going to be going, but I feel that we're probably going to be going there in style. That's right, in an airship. I thought that I could do it earlier in this episode and quickly make the jump to airship, but I was wrong. However, for the next episode, I'm very, very hopeful that we will indeed get to fly in this mystical balloon that the Kerbals keep telling me about. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very, very much for watching. My name, of course, has been Older Potato, and I'll see you next time. Bye.